Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to give your Access forms a dark shadow. Ooh, like the, remember the old vampire series, Dark Shadows? We're going to have dark shadows under our form. Look at that. Ooh, ah. All right, got your database here. Open up your customer list. Open up a customer. And, ooh, look at that. Dark shadow. Ooh, nifty. Now, this is a developer level video, which means we're going to be using some VBA. So if you've never done any VBA programming before, go watch this video first. It's about 20 minutes long. It'll teach you everything you need to know to get started. Okay, I'm going to start off this video by saying that this, uh, this, this works. It's not necessarily the best method for doing this. I've seen some third party utilities that do it better. And you could probably do it better with some advanced Windows API calls. But... If you know me, and if you've been watching my videos for any length of time, you know that I like to do as much as possible within the confines of Access. I don't like to use third-party tools. I try to avoid Windows API calls if I can, although sometimes it's avoidable. So I'm gonna show you a, a trick, a technique for doing this with just Windows, or excuse me, with just Access objects. And it's not great, it works. You know, there's a, maybe a tiny little bit of flicker. If you click on this, maybe resize this. There's a little bit of flicker, but it works, it's good enough. I use this to draw attention to a form, usually like a dialogue form or something like a custom message, a pop-up, right? You don't want to do this with all your forms because it'll, it'll clutter the interface, but it, 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 it does the job. All right, so I'm going to start off here in my Tech Help Free Template. This is a free database. You can grab a copy off my website if you want to, but what I'm going to show you is going to work with pretty much any database, so you don't have to use mine. You do have to be using overlapping windows though if you're using tabbed interface well it's not going to work for you so i like the overlapping windows i got a video just on that if you want to see how to use it uh go watch that i'll put a link down below so we're going to create a form that is basically one big black shadow or you can use gray if you want to all right so i'm going to take any form i'll just take the main menu for example copy it and paste it we're going to call this the shadow f the shadow form all right so design this guy design view you can delete all of the objects off of it. Okay. Uh, if there's any code behind it, go and delete that code. So here I am in the code editor. Just get rid of all of this stuff because we don't need any code in this form. Save it, right? And then make this background here whatever color you want your shadow to be. So you can go dark gray. You can go black. I'm going to go black because it shows up the best. You want a light shade of gray? Fine. It's not going to be transparent at all because Access doesn't support transparent forms. Note to developer team, transparent forms would be pretty cool. I know, I know, Access isn't really for graphical type stuff, but it would make some things neat. All right, and you can reshape this and size it however you want. I'll make it small because we're gonna, sh we're gonna size it to the form that it's behind in just a minute. All right, so there's my shadow form. Now, we also have to do one more thing. We have to turn off the border around the form so that it doesn't show up. So go into design view again, go into properties, now this is my main menu form. So some things like the record selectors and the navigation buttons, I already turned those off on this. So navigation buttons is no, record selectors is no, scroll bars is neither, control box, you can turn that off. Turn the close button off, make the border style right there set to none. Save it, close it. Now when you open it up, you're just gonna get a black box like that. All right, and there's really nothing you could do on it. You can't click on it, you can't do anything. So the only way you as a developer can get rid of it is to right click on it and go back to design view, which your end users won't be able to do because we turn that stuff off, right? I covered that in my security videos. So they can't right click and do stuff like that. Uh, so go ahead and close it now. Okay, now we're gonna need a little bit of code so that when we open up whatever form we want the shadow behind, it opens up the shadow form. So let's put it in the customer form, why not? Pick any form you want. And yes, you'll have to do this with each form that you wanna put the shadow behind. Again, I, I save this very sparingly for stuff I want to, you know, have a shadow behind. <laughs> All right, so when this form opens up, go to his events, events, right? You can either use the on open or the on load event. Doesn't matter. They do roughly the same thing. Where's on load? Where are you? Right there. On load. When this form loads up, we are going to do shadow. Okay, that's it. We're done. No, I'm just kidding. We got to tell the system what do shadow is. So we're going to make our own subroutine up here. Private sub do shadow. What are you going to do, do shadow? Well, we're going to do command open form the shadow F. Now that that form is open, we're going to move size it. Okay. 
Where are we going to move size it to? Well, the dimensions of the current form, right? The left, the top, the, the height and width. Just move it over to the right and down a little bit or up and left or wherever you want the shadow to be. It's real simple. Watch this. So it's do command dot move size. Now, since the other form is open, that's the one that's getting moved sized. It's whatever the last object that you're working with is. All right. So the right command, I know it's a little confusing because we got to mix right and left a little bit here. So it's me dot window left. That's the leftmost coordinate of me. And what is me? Me is whatever object you're in. So it's the customer F. Okay, so it's the customer F's window left. Plus, we're going to move it over 100 pixels. Is it pixels or twips? I can't remember. I think it's pixels. I think. I'm not sure. It doesn't matter. Uh, you can resize this as much as you want. You can make it 50 if you want less of a shadow, 200 if you want more of a shadow. I think 100 looks good for me. Comma, what's the down coordinate? Well, it's me dot window top. I know, confusing, sorry. I didn't, I didn't come up with this stuff. I'm just showing you guys how to do it. Plus 100, that'll move it down 100 pixels, units, twips, whatever they are, okay? <laughs> okay, and now the width and the height are just gonna be the width and the height of the window you got. Obviously, you can make it bigger or smaller, right? If you want one of those effects where the shadow is larger than the form, whatever you want. They're your Legos. Put them together however you want to. Me dot window width. Width, if I could spell width. And me dot window height. Height. There you go. So it's going to move the window right a little bit, down a little bit, and the same height and width of the form that it's under. Okay? Now, when we're done with that, we don't want the shadow form sitting on top. So we're going to reopen the form that we're on. So do command dot open form. Which form is it? Me dot name. That's the name of the current form that you're working with. You don't have to change that every form that you put this in. Okay. All right. So when the form loads up, it's going to do the shadow. Let's save it. Throw in a quick debug compile. Make sure it's working. All right. Let's close it. Close it. Close it. Open it. Ooh. Ah. There's my shadow. Now, when this thing closes, it's leaving that shadow form behind. So we have to tell our customer form to close the shadow form when it closes. Right click, design view, so we can close this guy. Let's go back into the customer form. Where are you? Customer form right there, design view. Okay, let's go back to your code. Now we need your form close event. All right, so come up here, form close or unload. Either one, there's unload, that'll work too. The only difference between load and open and unload and close is that one of them can be canceled. One runs first and gives you the option to cancel it. Like you could do some data validation and check to make sure stuff is the way you want it to be. And you can cancel the unload. But for what we're doing in this video, it doesn't matter. They'll both do the same thing. Okay. Here, all we have to do is close the shadow form. So do command dot close uh, AC form shadow F. And then I always put AC save yes in there. Lots of reasons why. This is mostly for you, the developer, because your end users, they're working with ACCDE files. They can't save anyway, so that's not for them. That's for you. When you open a form in design mode, you go make some changes and then you run it and your code closes the form and doesn't save your changes. I hate that. All right, so save it. Come back out. Yeah, close it. Open it. Close it and your shadow goes away. Ooh, ah. That's pretty cool, huh? All right, what if the user resizes the form? Well, it doesn't resize the shadow, huh? Well, that's easy to fix. There is a resize event. All right, right click, design view, open up in here, find the on resize right there, dot, 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 and just throw in here, do shadow. There's a reason why I made a custom sub for that earlier. I knew I'd be using it again. Save it, come back out, meow. Close it, close it, open it, and now your shadow will resize. Look at that. Ooh. Ah. Not perfect. There's a little flickering, but it works. Want the shadow to be bigger or smaller? Just change these numbers, right? 200. 200. You can make these constants if you want. I don't care. Right? Close it, open it. Now you got a bigger shadow. All right? Change the color of it. You can just change the color of the form. All right, now here's the one problem that you do have with this. If the user moves the form, unfortunately, there is no default access event that runs when the form is moved. So they will leave the shadow behind. Now, unfortunately, this is a little trickier to code. It's a lot more involved. 
and I will cover how to do that in the extended cut for the members. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut videos. There's lots of them, folks. There's hundreds of them. And of course, gold members get access to download these databases that I build in the tech help videos and the code vault, which has got lots of cool stuff in it. And if you like learning with me, if you like this kind of programming type stuff in your Microsoft Access, well, check out my developer lessons. I got tons of them on my website. I got 45 of them as of right now. It's January of 2024, and I try to release well, a new one every month if I can. So there's lots of them online. Check them out. But that is going to be your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn access and you haven't tried my free access level one course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You could find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing free four hours go watch it and okay okay a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four-hour course so I do now have a quicker Microsoft access for beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes and no I didn't just put the video on fast forward <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well now if you like level one level two is just a dollar that's it one dollar and that's another whole like 90 minute course Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two. It's free. Okay. Want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my access forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks. If you do decide to join as a paid member, there are different levels. Silver, Gold, Platinum, and Diamond. 
Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.